Yoga has so many benefits for cyclists and mountain bikers. These include things like flexibility, injury prevention, present moment awareness, our breathing. In this podcast, I interview Rebecca Bell. Rebecca is a professional mountain bike coach, or mountain bike skills coach. She is a yoga instructor, and she's going to share with us why we should be doing yoga and how we can incorporate it into our already very busy schedules. Rebecca Bell, thank you so much for being here. I'm super excited to chat with you about yoga, and that's a topic we haven't really talked about much on the podcast. But before we dive into all of that, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to meet you and to have this conversation. Um, I am passionate about yoga and mountain biking. I've been teaching yoga for 27 years and I've been mountain biking since the mid nineties. I started mountain biking in Utah. I lived in Alta up in Mm -hmm. Little Canyon and that's where I started riding and it was many seasons uh, traveling down to Moab and, you know, riding on slick rock with hardtails and, yeah. and uh, you know, simultaneously studying yoga. And I have been living most recently in Bend, Oregon for the last 15 years. Um, I coach mountain biking to women's groups and kids working for Bend Endurance Academy. And I also run Ruby Rides Bikes, a women's mountain biking and yoga retreat that's based here out of Bend. And I just love the whole concept of merging uh, mountain biking and yoga to bring together community and connection. We have uh, seasonal farm to table meals as well. We're hot springing, we're meditating, we're doing nourishing yoga practices to really bring women back home to themselves. It's a returning. Awesome. We'll talk a little bit more about your retreats in a little bit, but first, why yoga? Well, why do you recommend yoga for female mountain bikers? There's lots of reasons. Um, I'd have to say the top three. I okay. narrowed it down to three. Are really uh, injury prevention, uh, returning to the present moment, mindfulness, and I could say flexibility. Uh, flexibility also you know, is under the umbrella of injury prevention. I feel like those three mostly are the main reasons why. I love to get on a bike. I love to bring women out and get them out on trails. um, And as well as leading them through yoga practices, you know, that are going to help to support and enhance their time out on the trails on their bike. Let's, so let's dive into each of those kind of separately, each of those benefits. So the first one you said was flexibility, flexibility. Um, flexibility. We often, I think myself included, I'm all hunched over here right now. <laughs> we're as cyclists, we get like very tight. We're like, right. in our whole bodies. How does yoga help combat that? Well, what happens when we're riding a bike, you know, we're typically in this position in that ready to neutral position in what looks like a slight push up position. And we are in forward flexion. The front of our shoulders roll forward. Our pecs have a tendency to shorten and our chest becomes sunken a little bit concave. When we practice yoga, at least the classes that I'm teaching for mountain biking specific, we are opening what's called our whole T11 band. And we're practicing postures that help to widen our chest, to also lengthen our lateral chain, our side body, as well as releasing and opening up the front of the throat, the shoulders, all those areas that have a tendency, you know, to really get contracted. And what that does is when we get contracted in our front body is that we're not able to take a deep breath. Mm. Oftentimes our breath becomes short and then that affects our nervous system. So when we can actually learn how to counterpose mountain biking with a yoga sequence specifically for it, we then can transition into learning how to take a deep inhale Mm. and a deep exhale in order to find a sense of present moment as well as a opportunity to allow whatever's happening around us on our mountain bike, when we're climbing, 
all of us know we've been on those long climbs and sometimes it's a suffer fest, you know, and Mm -hmm. when we can calm our nervous system, Mm -hmm. having the ability to roll our shoulders back, take a big inhale and get out of that forward flexion position, that concave chest, it's all woven together. And that's how one way that the flexibility piece can really assist us and support Mm. us in enhancing our time when we're out on our bikes. Yeah, that's actually something I wasn't thinking of when I thought of the flexibility was actual being able to breathe better as well. It's interesting. Yeah, breathing is a huge component. And oftentimes we're breathing through our mouth. And when we can learn to breathe through our nose, Mm -hmm. we can learn to slow down our breath. I mean, my first 100 mile mountain bike race that I did, the high 100 here in Bend, I redlined out of the gate. I was breathing so hard to the point where I wasn't able to to regulate my breath, nervous system, Right. you know, what happens then. And that was a huge lesson for me in learning that I actually want to use my yoga practice and yoga. So the umbrella of yoga, there's all these different limbs and the physical practice is one of the limbs called Mm -hmm. the asana practice. We also have the pranayama Prana means life force. Yama, you could think of the extension of the thread of the breath. And that's also one of the limbs. Those two are the ones that I mostly focus on when I teach, lead, uh, yoga specific for mountain biking to teach students how to actually open their mid back, their T11 side body, deep in their breath, learn how to slow it down, to regulate. We can surrender and drop into the present moment when we're on those long rides. Or it could be in, like we were just talking about in Whistler in that tech section, when I know for me, I'm following my boys most of the time and I can get in over my head and then I have to slow down, return to center. And I find that through my breath. Yeah, absolutely. And it's very, I feel like they're very complimentary too, because biking is another way to kind of be in the present moment, right? As is yoga. So in that sense, um, I think they're very similar. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that whole, that's the whole, I feel like my intention and my love for yoga and for mountain biking is that that's one of the gifts it gives us is that it's this continuous returning, return, Mm -hmm. you know, because it is a direct or immediate feedback activity that we do. You know, if you're not in the present moment when you're on your bike, what happens? We all know. Right. Yeah. You're going to go down. (laughs) (laughs) I can't be thinking about anything else when I'm on my bike, usually, unless, you know, I might be out in a cross country ride Mm -hmm. and then my mind will start to travel, but it's that breath that draws us back to the moment. And the flexibility piece also goes as far as segueing into injury prevention that, you know, when we do come off of our bikes in whatever way we fall, we crash, that oftentimes it's that flexibility piece that really prevents the injury. I was in King Castle and I was riding this summer and I came around one of the lower switchbacks, you know, on a corner and I was going just a little too fast. And my rear wheel slid out on a bunch of loose scree. And sure enough, I went flying off my bike and I did this huge leap, like into a bunch of bushes, you know, scrub brush. And I almost did full splits, not quite, but I got up, I looked at my friend that I was with and I was like, that is why I do yoga. Yeah. Because I, my adductors and hamstrings were able to go into that full extension and then I also strength train. I'm a big believer in strength training yeah. two to three times a week as well. But I landed and I was like, oh, it was such a reminder. That's the flexibility piece that then prevents injury in moments like that. Right. Other than, you know, cr- crashing better, what else does yoga do for us in terms of injury prevention? Other than crashing better injury, well... I think what happens is the repetitive motion. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes when we're mountain biking, not as much as say road riding or even gravel riding, because we have such varied terrain all the time, but we are in repetitive motion. Mm -hmm. 
tendons. And so what happens is, as we know, our external rotators, our outer hips, TFLs, can get, they can get bound up. And for instance, using that as an example, that when we practice yoga, you know, when we're working into say a hip opening practice, and this is the difference between yoga for athletic recovery mm. and yoga for conditioning. Mm. What I focus on primarily is yoga for athletic recovery. Mm. Okay. Because I think that's really important when we're practicing specifically, say our hips become tight because we're in that constant, you know, same repetitive motion pedaling that when we practice a sequence of hip openers, for instance, that focus on external rotation, that then will bring balance to our pelvis. That can help to release the tightness mm. that we, you know, accrue through pedaling repetitively. And that way, when we're done with our ride, you know, or if we practice after our ride, you know, that then prevents repetitive injury syndrome. Yeah. And a lot of our listeners are road cyclists or gravel cyclists. So I think that that repetitive portion becomes even more yeah. important there. More important. And you think yeah. you're in forward flexion all the time. Yep. And then your external rotators get bound up. Most of us are quad dominant, unless we really focus on strengthening our hamstrings, mm -hmm. you know, our postural chain. And what happens is that we do, we become, our muscles become a little shorter. We get the repetitive motion and they tighten up in those specific areas. And when we practice yoga sequences to lengthen and, and you know, I don't want to say completely release, but at least counter yeah. you know, what we just did, that can do, that can create a reset. And that helps with keeping, I like to think of it as like homeostasis, you know, equanimity within the body mm -hmm. as well as nervous system. Mm -hmm. And of course, we then have meditation for our minds. Mm -hmm. I think the meditation piece, let's talk about that for a second. I think a lot of mountain bikers, a lot of cyclists are very like type A, very go, go, go. Yeah. And it sometimes it's almost hard to convince them that they should do yoga too, because it doesn't feel like competitive enough. Or can you talk a little bit about that piece? Um, the piece that yoga doesn't feel competitive enough. No, that... right, right. Or just like, can it, is there any benefit for folks who are like so type A, so competitive all the time to maybe step back into something that's a little oh. less so? Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> well, 100%, yes, there are so many benefits um, to practicing a softer practice, to mm -hmm. practice you know, yoga in a way, as I mentioned, that is cycling specific. And, you know, it, it helps us because we, as we all know, recovery, I feel like is such a hot topic, you know, making sure that we're resting, mm -hmm. and making sure that we are practicing all the different modalities, you could say, you know, the biohacks, you know, so that we can be restored in order to get out there and get after it when we're ready to. And I think that yoga is that piece, you know, when you're practicing in that skillful way that gives the cyclist that opportunity to, again, release the areas of their body that are being with the repetitive motion. Mm -hmm. Also to calm the nervous system because we often know, even though cycling, I believe, is a moving meditation at times, especially on the road. Yeah. And but when you're practicing the yoga postures and you integrate it with breath work and with a meditation practice, that that is going to enhance everything that you're doing on your bike. Yeah, I... I'm not sure if that answers your question. It does. It absolutely does. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you keep mentioning, you know, doing yoga for recovery. Um, mm -hmm. How do we find the correct instructor that maybe is going to be able to do like, are we trying to find somebody who does yoga for cyclists or for yoga or for mountain bikers? 
or is there a certain type of yoga that works well for cyclists? What would you recommend? Yeah, I would find an instructor, you know, in your area that it's helpful to not that this can always be the case, but if you can find a yoga instructor that also cycles, Mm -hmm. I think that that is really important because, you know, they will usually know, you know, what areas that you want to target and also what areas that you want to not offer your students or, and I mean, areas, I mean, genre of poses, right? For instance, like I am not going to lead a room of athletes through a forward fold, a practice where we're standing up, imagine, and then you bend your knee slightly and touch the floor with your fingertips, right? It's called a forward fold. Mm -hmm. You can practice them either standing or when you're seated. I am not going to offer a sequence where we're going to shorten and tighten the hip flexors, tighten the deep psoas muscles, and then create more internal rotation of the shoulders. Mm. And so you want to find, you know, there's certain practices, for instance, I love Ashtanga yoga. You know, I have practiced it for 30 years. However, I don't really recommend it. It wouldn't be a prescription Mm. cyclist. It's too many forward folds. I would recommend more of what would be called either a Hatha style practice, which is Hatha means, you know, the physical practice of yoga. It's usually not a flow practice. That's one style of yoga that someone could look into with a teacher that knows how to offer sequences specifically for athletes or a gentle flow class. I feel like you have to meet students where they're at. Hmm. I am a big believer that if you have a room full of athletes and you start them, say in a pose where they're not moving necessarily, like maybe they're reclining, although this could feel really good. You know, maybe they're, they come in and they're just had their ride and their energy is pretty high still. Like I might not start them on their back in a restorative pose, I might start them with some slow, intentional movement, you know, just to get them to transition from having their heart rate up into lowering their heart rate, gradually starting to warm up the areas of the body that I want to focus on, segueing into a, a, what would be called the vinyasa flow practice that's going to keep the body warm enough Mm. in order to move into those areas that are going to be specifically, uh, you know, designated for cycling. And so I would probably stay away from Ashtanga yoga. Okay. I love, I love Ashtanga. I would find a teacher that's going to be more alignment based and yet also understands, you know, that an athlete body needs to be properly warmed up before you go into a practice specifically sequenced for that body type. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, In terms of timing of our yoga practice, should we be doing it after we get back from a ride? That's a great question. I think that you could do more mobility before a ride. Okay. You know, the difference between a mobility practice and then a yoga practice. Mm. Um, mobility, I feel like, is really helpful to do prior to getting on your bike. Although if you did, say, three yoga stretches, you know, before you got on your ride, you know, that also, of course, is going to be helpful. I would recommend practicing after. Okay. You, because, again, that's going to bring equanimity back to the body and allow those areas that had the repetitive motion, you know, begin to, I always say we're undoing the doing when we get on our mats. Yeah. I like that. That's very good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Does it matter? Does it have to be right after a ride? Like, is that best? Or is it okay if we do a lunch ride and then we go to a yoga class in the evening kind of a thing? Oh, I don't, I think it can be, Um, it's not necessarily when you're going to practice. I feel like it's how often the okay. consistency I think is the most important part. So how and, often and how long should we be yeah. doing it? I mean, that, that's a great question. I always say any practice is better than no practice, okay. whether it's, let's make it real and accessible. So whether it's five minutes, you know, um, six days a week, 
or whether it's you know two to three practices a week, I think two practices you're going to maintain. You're just going to sort of stay at that maintenance place. Three practices a week, you're generally going to be able to dive a little deeper into say opening up, you know, side body, upper back, hips, quads especially, hip flexors, and let's not forget our feet and our lower legs, calves especially. And our outer shins, our peroneus muscles, like have a tendency to get really tight in cycling, mm. uh, you know, and it can be anywhere from, you know, five to 20 minutes. Again, it's that consistency piece over, um, it's better to be more consistent than to do one practice a week for 60 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So you're a mom, you're a businesswoman, you do all the things. How do you manage to do writing? And strength training. <laughs> and now we're also adding in yoga. Like, how do we do all of this? <laughs> how do we do all this? Yeah. The thing is that my mantra is to be kind, be kind to ourselves. That, you know, we have this general, I have this general template for the week and I do my best, you know, to fit it in. Um, For me, it looks like I get it in when I can Meaning that, again, if I go for a ride and I do three poses at my car, whether it's on the grass or the parking lot, you know, do a little side body stretch, figure four, you know, perhaps I do like an L position, I get into my T-spine, even that three poses, anytime after, even during, when I first started, I'm such a um, late bloomer with social media. And when I first started on social media for like a year or two, I would do little mini sequences out on the trail because that's oh. what I like to do. Yeah. So I might be out on a ride and people are taking a break and I'll go find, you know, I'll go find just a little area where I can, whether do a downward dog, my favorite is low lunges out on the trail you know, do some nice cactus arms, get into the T-spine, open up the mid back, take a deep breath. That's a practice. Okay. It doesn't have to be, you have to go to a studio, you know, get in your car, get to the studio, get a sitter, you know, 60 minutes there, 20 minute drive back to your house. You can integrate it into your daily life. And so that's often how I do it is that I will practice, you know, I have a couple times a week that I do practice at a studio, I oftentimes will practice with my yoga privates. I will, strength training is a non-negotiable. I'm 55. Yeah. Menopause. Yeah. Now, if we, being in menopause, we lose 3% of our muscle mass every year. Right. It is the 401k plan is our muscle mass. Yeah. And so for me, strength training, my family knows this has to be a non-negotiable two, if not three times a week. Yep. You know, I drop my 14 year old off at school in the morning and I don't even think about it. I'm dressed for the gym. I go directly to the gym that I work out. I get that in. And from there, you know, I I'm either going to teach a class yoga private, or I'm going to go coach out with the kids or the women's. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes, how can I integrate whether it's yoga, when I'm out on my bike, after my ride, schedule strength training, that's on my calendar. Mm -hmm. And meditation, that also has to be a non-negotiable. Meditation, it's either in the morning when I first wake up, I sit right up in my bed, right? Because we want to make everything really accessible and be kind to ourselves again, circling mm -hmm. back to that. I used to think I have to set up my altar. I have to have all the things, right? The candle, this, that, and forget it. It's like, if my meditation happens in my car, when I'm waiting for my 14 year old, mm -hmm. or it happens in my bed in the morning, I sit up or it happens at night. You know, if I'll sit up in my bed, I'll meditate five, 15 minutes. I definitely go through times where I have a much more, my meditation practice is much more scheduled. It's 20 to 25 minutes twice a day. And then there's other seasons where, you know, if I'm busy, like right now, moving into leading retreats in the fall, more mountain bike coaching, because it's our season here, mm -hmm. Oregon, that my meditation practice right now looks like, you know, it's five minutes here, nine minutes, but it's consistent. Yeah. 
Um, so if we're just doing nine minutes, that's obviously not enough time to be going to a gym or to like an actual class. Are there any resources for us to be doing, like to learn a few poses we can do on our own or like to watch a YouTube video? What do you suggest? That's a really good question. Resources. Hmm. I feel like Yoga Glow, Yoga Glow is a online yoga platform and I probably have been using it for, I mean, some of my favorite teachers who we all grew up teaching together and are on there still teaching. Um, and there are all different durations of classes that you can practice for five minutes, you know, up to whatever time that you have um, that I do will drop, I'll drop into yoga glow every once in a while. I, I mean, I have my own online yoga platform as well. Oh, and I okay. Have- so tell us about that. Okay, I do. Yeah. Maybe yeah. omit that, that last edit. That okay. okay. <laughs> um, I do have a online yoga program and there are about 125 classes in there right now. Some of them are specifically for athletes where they're gentle flow, shorter durations, focusing on every part of the body that we just talked about. And that's where I would recommend people to go is you could check out my online uh, program. It's on my Instagram. You can access it through my, my links. And also there are there, are, I mean, there's books out there. I'm trying to think of anything specifically. I've just been so fortunate that, you know, I have studied with teachers that have passed on, you know, the al- more alignment-based practices, specifically yoga therapeutics. Mm-hmm. And I've had teachers and yeah, I've had teachers in my life that have taught me that way. Okay. Um, but for someone who is brand new, and new to yoga or new to yoga for athletes and more for recovery, direct them to me. <laughs> okay. okay, very good. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, that's um, not, there's not one book right now that I can think of specifically. Maybe I could text you some later. Yeah, absolutely. We can include, okay. Yeah, absolutely. We yeah. can include, include them in the show notes. Yeah, some resources. Okay. You know. Um, you've mentioned your retreats. Tell us a little bit about those. Um, well, so I started Ruby Rides Bikes two years ago. Um, I was on a yoga retreat myself after I had been bought out of my yoga studio here in Bend. It was such a blessing. It was January 1st, 2020. Oh, <laughs> but I was bought out and I was coaching mountain biking, um, teaching lots of privates, And I was about to open up a new studio in Bend and I was able to exit out of that lease. I launched the online yoga studio uh, that I I call the shift. And because the last three years, right, we've all been in some sort of shift, you know, on some level. And I had gone on a yoga retreat where I had some time, you know, to really sit and contemplate, get some insight on what direction I wanted to go next. And what came to me through my meditation was merging women's mountain biking, yoga retreats, bringing women out onto the trails, um, offering them skills, Mm -hmm. um, generating confidence, you know, um, practicing nourishing yoga practices, meditation, the farm to table seasonal meals to create a safe container where women can feel vulnerable. Being a yoga teacher for 27 years and a mountain biker, I, and also I've been in recovery. I've been sober for 35 years as well. And I oftentimes love women, women approach me and be like, how do you do this? What, what, like, I want to get out there and ride. I don't even know which is my front or my rear Mm brake, but I'm afraid. I'm afraid to go ride with other women who are already skilled riders. I get intimidated when I, when I ride with my partner. Mm-hmm. And after years of having women come to me and ask me, this was also more feedback that this is the time is right. And through my meditation that I had when I was on this retreat in Mexico, 
came Ruby Rides Bikes. Okay. And I proceeded to write, write a whole journal full of what, who is Ruby? What is Ruby Rides Bikes? And, you know, Ruby is, you know, the woman that wants to come and, you know, feel a sense of adventure, you know, by sleeping underneath the stars, connecting to herself in nature, learning how to be out on a bike, connecting with themselves through feeling, uh, you know, nature around them, creating confidence, you know, and learning skills, connecting with other women, community, mm -hmm. feeding themselves, mm -hmm. you know, with all of these nourishing practices. And also we're usually in places where there's hot springs, you know, and so there's that component as well, getting into the water. It's a returning, it's a returning home, you know, through nature, connection, community. And I realized after the fact that the acronym Ruby, ride your bike and yoga. Yeah, that's really cute. Thank you. Yeah. And, and so I recently have created a marketing deck and I pitched it to Juliana mm -hmm. and Juliana has said that they'd like to collaborate with me, which is really exciting. Super cool. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And Hydro Flask as well here in Bend, you know, has been supporting my retreats. Um, I was a Lululemon ambassador for the last five years. That ambassadorship just ended this summer, but they've been really supportive and, you know, will continue to uh, support Ruby Rides Bikes. But at this point, it's really uh, growing on its own. And I feel like I need some help, <laughs> you know, because like you said, trying to be the product, you know, I'm out coaching, leading, facilitating yoga. Mm -hmm. Do you have a chef? I have brought in another mountain biking coach, but in terms of like tech support, marketing, back end, you know, admin, all of it, uh, we're at this point now where Ruby Rides Bikes is doing well. We've just sold out five retreats and we've started offering signature day series events where women can come and get a taste of what it's like to practice mindful, mindful yoga that's going to enhance their experience on the trails. Again, creating flexibility, bringing them back to the present moment, as well as getting them out on a bike, uh, you know, having this three hours out in nature, returning, you know, experiencing a farm to table seasonal meal. Mm -hmm. And those have been doing really well as well. Um, so they're not just in Bend, they're in different locations? I'm starting, they've been only in Bend, okay. but I'm starting to do the Signature Series Day events 2024. Okay. Outside of Bend. Um, mostly right now it's been at Horse Creek Lodge over on the McKenzie has been my main um, hub that I've been doing my retreats out of, uh, as well as with Cog Wild. I partnered yeah. with Cog this summer and, you know, we, we did a weekend there and then a day event and yeah. Very cool. I feel hey. like there is just such a like insatiable demand almost for all of these women's like retreats, but also clinics and camps and events. And it's just, it's really cool to see how much it's exploded and it just, there's continued demand for it. Women really yeah, want to come together with other women. I know. Well, and yeah. I think what I keep hearing the feedback is that women feel, they feel safe, mm. you know, feel like they're in this space where they can ask the questions that they might be afraid of that could present as silly, yeah. you know, they can be vulnerable. Yeah. And it's through that vulnerability that I feel like we create trust, we create community and there's been such a disconnect. I feel like what we've all gone through mm -hmm. and the three and a half years. And I feel like what mountain biking gives us as well as yoga is the, the space to return, you know, to return to feeling, like I said, a few minutes ago, feeling that connection, feeling connection to earth, feeling connection to spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a big piece, you know, that I do talk about that, you know, when we are able to connect to spirit, we're feeling that God sized like whole. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes we're seeking in all these different ways in our daily life. We're always out reaching for this. And it's that next, you know, that next thing that's going to bring us happiness or it's that whatever it is material or, and I feel like what my 
what I'm hearing is that we all want experiences now. We want to be out having experiences mm -hmm. and we want connection and we want community. And that's what I feel like Ruby Rides Bikes offers is all of that. You get the experience of being out in nature, connecting with yourself, other women, nourishing yourself with being on your bike, you know, having, having intentional conversation, learning, learning skills. So you feel empowered. Empowerment is huge. Mm -hmm. We all want to feel empowered again, you know? And so having, having this space to learn these skills and to take the time, carve it out of your schedule, then to, you know, enjoy these meals, make friendships, mm -hmm. you know, that it's that coming home. And so you don't feel that longing to constantly be outside of yourself, yeah. you know, reaching externally. Mm -hmm. And I think at least my experiences is that that's what mountain biking and yoga, that's how they fulfill me. Mm -hmm. And my hope is, is to share that with other women who also feel the same. I love that. That was really powerful. Um, yeah, I've got three final questions for you. But first, how can folks come connect with you? How can they learn more about your online yoga and your retreats and all of it? Um, well, they could check out my Instagram that I'm always learning because I do it myself at RebeccaBell.Flows. Also, uh, my I have an email list. I'm starting to build um, an email list and sending out before <laughs> I was sending out just seasonal emails. And now I feel like through these retreats, I'm starting to gain some traction. So they can also um, get on my email list and they can do that through my Instagram link as well on Linktree. Okay, perfect. We'll include that in the show notes too. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So final three questions. The first okay. one is what bike or bikes do you ride? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm on a specialized stumpy right now. I mulleted the back 27 and a half. It's so much fun. Uh, 160 travel up front. I've been having a blast on it for the last two seasons. I will say though, on Saturday, I was part of a cancer fundraiser bike out here in Bend and I was able to dem it, demo a pivot. I demoed the switchblade. Mm -hmm. And I have to say it's the first bike out of all the bikes I've ridden that I have standover room. I'm five, one and a half. Oh, uh -huh. So I have standover yeah. and I actually, today's going to be day two on it. I'm going to go ride it on one of my favorite downhills here. I already am like, this is the bike. I feel like it's, you know, and of course it's like what my 14 year old rides and races on and all mm. is broken ride and I've always looked at the pivot but I wasn't sure I was so having so much fun on my specialized yeah EVO stumpy and I don't know pivot could be my next bike yeah pivot does such a good job of making bikes for smaller riders I never knew that yeah and, they do okay yeah and I was like, where, where has this been like where although they're all around me you know um, okay yeah. so second question is what is your favorite place you've ever ridden your bike Gosh, there's so many. Um, I'd have to say I love the backcountry in Grand Targhee. Mm -hmm. Being able to go to Targhee and we can ride the bike park as a family and then I can take off or we take off and go do the ribbons of single track in the summer, you know, that have wildflower flowers that are just hip height and um, fields of them. I love the Targhee area um, for mountain biking. I will say Moab, though Moab at spring, fall, you know, I have to say um, Hi Mesa, uh, Captain Ahab, mm. you know, those are a couple of my favorite rides out there um, in Moab. You know, I love, I love having like Central Oregon out my back door. Yeah. I'm really appreciative. Like from my house, I can ride right to Phil's complex and from there, I could ride all the way up to Bachelor. And I will say that South Fork here, you know, in Bend is one of my favorite downhills. You just get a little of everything. 
final question for you is what is your favorite thing about riding your bike? My favorite thing mm -hmm. about riding my bike? Mm -hmm. Well, it makes me feel like I'm a kid again. It gets me out of this, my stinking thinking. And, you know, it makes me smile. It makes me feel so connected, you know, whether I'm out on a bike alone, but connecting to spirit, connecting to, you know, um, the other women or my husband that I'm riding with, whoever I'm with, mm -hmm. you know, getting out there. And I just, it, it's a constant reminder of like how blessed we are, right? That we get to go ride bikes and we get to go spend time, you know, in these areas that we're in and just breathe in the fresh air and we have healthy bodies. So it's a lot of gratitude, you know, for being able to be on a bike and do what, do what I do. And so it's, I would say it's probably gratitude, you know, 